I've been watching a lot of post-apocalyptic movies recently. I don't know why, they really fascinate me. Particularly A Quiet Place. There's a scene in that movie where they're using baskets to catch fish in the river. And this got me thinking, what would you do if something dreadful did happen? Specifically food, fresh food. Could you fish with limited materials around you? That's no line, no hook, no boat, no fishing rod. Could you catch a fish with say, a knife or a multi-tool and some paracord? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. So today's a little bit morbid, more so than we normally do because we are in the middle of the woods and we are searching for bones. Yeah, I know. So probably uh, a rabbit or game like pheasant or something. Apparently that's what makes the best natural fish hooks or improvised fish hooks. So, eyes peeled. So apparently bones are a good material to make fishing hooks from because you can shape them and because they are strong. What are these? They look like tiny little trees. Look how big they are. Oh, look at that. I don't even, I don't even know if that's plastic or bone. No, that's oh. fine. <laughs> that's horrible. This is a fallen tree. And look what's like imprinted into the ground that's been brought up. Look, that's, that's a bigger animal. Look at that. We found what looks like the remains of a, probably a dead sheep. So I think how this works is that you kind of indiscriminately smash up all the bones and hope to get um, a really sharp shard, which the, you then can finish into a hook. That's the idea behind this. So I'm just gonna remove all these horrible bones from this wall break them all up and uh, hope we get lucky. So let's, <laughs> this is uh, this is horrible. <laughs> Two. All right, so I'm gonna smash up these bones and hopefully we yield a sharp point which we can then finish into a hook that actually works. The bone is porous, so I don't think that's gonna work. I think we need something more like this piece. Yeah, that's, you hear the sound of that? It's like, this is really sharp bone. Like, that could cut me. I'm gonna try and split it along here so that I've just got this section here to work with. Once the leg was broken up, I began carving and filing the fragment into a hook. But I think that's pretty good. What do you think? So this is our power cord. You see that it has a number of internal smaller cords, which we can kind of just work out. And this will give us like seven fishing lines. Hopefully we don't need that many because we don't have that many hooks. And this stuff is plenty strong. And this is our weight pebble. Using a pebble and tree resin as glue, I formed a makeshift weight. Right. A short piece of elder acted as the float and this completed my improvised fishing line. What do you think? Hmm. Still not, still not convinced. Okay, so now I need some bait. I loved doing this as a kid. This one, surely. Not a single worm. Oh, 
There's one. Oh, gross. Bingo. Got our worm. It's bait. Just gonna put this on, and then I'm a little bit worried about how we're gonna cast out. Like I can just see it plopping down in front of me and not getting out. Vastly underestimated how much paracord I had. All right, we've just joined two of the pieces of paracord together, so it's a bit longer, let's see. A bit anticlimactic, eh? Even if this was infinitely long, like, it's not going out. And there's just, it's, that's just too shallow. It's not looking good. <laughs> I just can't, I can't get out far enough, there's no point in being here. I've got to say, the only thing that tangles more than fishing line is paracord. <laughs> Straight in the tree. How can it be that tangled? Yeah, I need to get it out further and I just can't do it, I'm getting tangled everywhere. It's getting caught on the bottom, it's getting caught in the trees. It's a nightmare. I need either a fishing rod or a boat. And so I immediately began constructing a boat. Maybe should have cut this a little bit closer to... Can't believe I'm gonna try sail on this thing. This. Obviously in a real survival situation, you'd probably walk with us back to the site our frame is going to plot right in the middle of Using a tarpaulin and ferns as a hull, I made an improvised coracle that hopefully was watertight. I look, can get in. It's quite, quite a big space actually. Confident about me getting in? No. <laughs> it's a lot bigger and a lot heavier than I thought it would be, but <laughs> it's a boat. And tomorrow she sets sail. <laughs> Right, don't puncture a hole in the side, Michael. Obviously, in a real survival situation, you probably wouldn't have a wetsuit. Is there any elegant way to get into a wetsuit? Doesn't seem to be any leaks. With my tarp boat and Tesco bag paddle, I was off and floating. Obviously the, the paddle does pick up a little bit of water, being a plastic bag and all. Right, so we got our bone hook with our worm that we found, our rock weight. You in? Right, I guess that's it. Now it's just a waiting game. Cool. Got a feeling we'll be here for a while. To my surprise, things were going rather well. However, within a matter of minutes, I drifted in the wind and had to be rescued by men in boats. So, the wind drifted us too far out and we had to be rescued. And I can't really use my paddle. So I'm just being rescued, being pulled back to shore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie myself to the shore. I really do appreciate the people who worked really hard to rescue me because I, I was perilously just drifting into the abyss. The worst thing is I didn't even know. Obviously in a real survival situation you wouldn't have hot chocolate. <laughs> Pretty miserable out there. <sighs> oh, lovely. Tethered to the shore with even more paracord, I tried again. The sun's come out a little bit. The wind is miserable. Here we go. A little bit excited there but just pond weed. I spent the next few hours enjoying life in the slow lane. <laughs> yeah, I'm having fun. Be better if I got a bloody nibble. Not a bloody nibble. Not a nibble. I don't think there's anything wrong with a hook, but the fish aren't biting. 
All right, I'll come in. Despite being watertight, the coracle was not exactly comfortable. And after six hours on the water, I'd had enough. Just carrying a wee bit of water. <laughs> the next day, we tried again. All right, back out on the water. 7 a.m., crack of dawn. Lines are in the water, feeling rather hopeful. Come on, give me some in. Obviously, in a real survival situation, it's unlikely you would have a chocolate bar to hand, but... Needs must. Still fishing, still no bites. That's two hours in now. I'm miserable, I'm miserable, I'm absolutely miserable. Once again, nothing. Uh, yeah, starting to lose a bit of hope here. I'm wondering what the f I'm doing with my life. This is f***ing miserable work, this. I'm f***ing pulling in these piece of lines because I've had enough. My feet are soaking. My f***ing agony. I've had a tree branch up my hole for two days. It's not After two full days that provided no evidence of any life under the surface of the loch, I threw in the towel. <laughs> Luckless. Or skillless, one of the two. Okay, so if you really were hungry, if it really was a post-apocalyptic world, you'd probably head towards the coast. The sea brings life to the shore. That's clams, mussels, oysters, crustaceans, plants you can eat, and fish. So perhaps I was just fishing in the wrong place. So armed with some renewed enthusiasm, we headed for the seaside. So obviously, earlier we were fishing inland, so we were using earthworms. Now we're fishing at sea, so my guess is that we'll need sea worms. These burrows are made by what's called lugworm, and apparently the fish love them, so these are gonna be great bait. Hopefully I can dig these up with just my stick and my hands. Once again, fishing with no materials proved more difficult than I thought. Digging in wet sand was unpleasant. Look at this. Well, this is miserable. I don't think I've ever been so happy at holding a worm in my hand. <laughs> Pretty crappy work, but here they are. Lugworm. Hey, that's a lot of a bear. There's a fish on. There's a fish on. It's in the seaweed. It's in the seaweed. Yes! <laughs> yes! 
If you enjoy this channel, it's quite possible that you too want to learn a new skill this year. Perhaps it's for work or for personal reasons or just to improve yourself. My advice, as always, is start now. And if you can, try to avoid the minefield of boring, unclear, and overlay long-winded tutorials that are available on the internet. Skillshare has 25,000 classes taught by people who are not only experts in their field, but are also skilled at teaching, something that is often overlooked. So if you want to learn animation, film production, or app development, or anything really, this is a good place to start. I even have a class on Skillshare that teaches you how to solve the Rubik's Cube the most intuitive way. That is using the least number of algorithms. It's worth checking out. So here's the deal. Usually Skillshare's annual subscription works out at less than 10 bucks a month. But since they sponsor the show, my viewers, by using the link in the description, can get two months free, unadulterated, unlimited access to every class. So you can learn whatever you like. And there's no commitment to stay on after that offer period ends. So if there's a skill that you've been putting off learning and you want to help support the show, check out Skillshare using the link in the description. And I'll see you next time. Peace.